Right, as you can see, the Phantom is all lovely and primed. All the imperfections have disappeared. Where I'd sanded off some of the glue marks especially. The underneath, you can see it's looking lovely and neat and tidy now. Where I'd, you know, again, mostly with glue marks. And a bit of sanding here and there. It's gone an absolute treat. You can also see that I've painted uh, the wing, part, part of the wing in white, spray painted that in white. I've also spray painted the top edges of the wings in white, because that's what it says on the plans, paint this area white. Now I'm thinking it's because of the decals that go there, I think in the white is quite transparent. Now as you can see I've took the red ones off because I'm going to be using the black ones but I use the red ones to, to pencil down a, um, a mark to trace around it so I could uh, mask all this off after I'd primed and then I masked off the rest where I, where I didn't want any white to go down and then just uh, once it had all dried I took all the newspaper off because like I said I think the white, you, I don't know if you can tell, but I think the white is going to be very transparent, much like the transparentness on the lifeboat decals, the actual lettering decals, and that's why this has got to be all painted white. So that's what I've done. So now um, this is ready for the camo paint now. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, I've now done all my camo work on the Phantom, and it's looking really, really nice. Um, if you remember, I'd just done the priming and the white back for the uh, stripe decals. Um, so I drew the camo on with my pencil, as per the plans, all the way around, and then on the top, as you can see. So here's the... Uh, paint guide as you remember from the unboxing video you got one with the black stripes and one with the red stripes so I basically went with the white stripe first so I did all the pencil work on the side and then I'm turning this over I went to the pencil work on the top the only trouble is the pencil work on the top didn't meet the pencil work on the side Feeling frustrated, I went uh, back to the bottom one, and then what I've done is I've done a hybrid of the bottom one and the top one so the lines will meet. So that's something to think about when you do your own. So the two main colours for the dark green, you got the 36168 Dunkel Green Dark Green and the number 26 brown for the brown areas as you can see but then it came to this rear tile section this section here you can see on the plans that you got the two main colours but then that middle colour didn't say what it's supposed to be so I went on the internet looking at me reference photos that I've been using and it's actually olive so using my 36146 NATO olive. I painted that in the, uh, the that section there and on the other side. Also, looking at photos on the internet of the tail wing, there's actually th three colours on the tail wing. So I used the NATO olive to fill that in the gap there because that's what it that's what it looked like anyway on the internet. And then you got this piece section here for the I painted that in gun metal, but the plans actually call for you to paint it all the way across. But looking at the photos on the internet, it's just that triangle. So that's what I've done there, both sides. So once all my uh, paint had dried, um, I then tackled the edges right up to the edges on the bottom there and on the wing. And they, I, you can see it looks fairly straight, not too bad at all. And then once all that had dry, I then did the bottom. And as you can see, it's all looking really nice where I'd gone up to the lines not too bad at all now the grey that I painted that in is the 36157 and it's turned out really really well not bad at all 
Now when it comes to the nose, I just painted that in black. I didn't mask it off to get the straight line, I did it freehand and it doesn't look too bad, it's not 100% straight, but it'll do for what I need it to do. And as you can see, I've done it all the way around and underneath. Then while I was waiting for that and the grey to dry, started work on the missiles. Uh, you get four missiles here, but you have to put the guiding fins on. Uh, there's two each side for each missile, so I've done that. Just stand in an upside down fall over, then you've got bombs, missiles, well, sorry, bombs and uh, fuel tanks there as well, so I've done those. So I'm just waiting for those to dry. But I'm getting there. Stay with me. Alright, welcome back. As you can see, I've been very busy indeed. I'll start with the bottom decaling of the underneath of the Phantom, as you can see. All the decals are now on. It's pretty much all caution and warning decals, as long as as well as me uh, stripe decals. So what I did on the plans, I started from right the exhausts and worked my way round, ticking each number as I went along, so I know what I've put down, and then finished off round the bottom of this side of the exhausts with the last couple of uh, warning decals. Using my microset and some water, obviously to soak the decals in, laid each decal down, got my little blue tissue and just uh, dabbed down each decal as I went along. Took me a couple of hours. Um, I started off with the striped decals, then worked more around with the warning decals. Let those dry. Then I went around with my microsol, especially on these decals to suck them in a bit better. And all the warning decals left those to dry for a couple of hours and then went with my Humbrol matte coat now don't forget to if you use a matte coat or whatever make sure you give it a bloody good shake for about a minute or so to stop the uh, the matte living at the bottom of the jar just to disturb it and then once you've done that just paint that on I just went all over the wing not the decals themselves you know, just wearing the decals, went all over the wing, so I sealed everything grey, as well as the decals, and left that over the night to dry. And as you can see, it's looking really, really nice, especially on the striped decals, looking very nice indeed. Now, the decals are actually a bit long for the actual wing, so I trimmed them off with my scissors before I soak them in the water. And then what I'll do is, once I put the top ones on, I'll just go around with a bit of black paint just to link those up. While I was waiting for the matte coat to dry on that, I did all my bombs and missiles and my fill tanks. So I primed them all first, then I brought this lot back in. And then I went over the primer with the white spray for the missiles. And they're ready for decaling. And I'm getting there. Stay with me. Right, as you can see... I've now done all my top and uh, side decals. You've got all the warnings and the uh, regiment plate, the rescue and the pilot names, all the no step and the no push decals there on. Um, you can see that I've uh, put the, um, the black stripe decals on now. And again, the squadron name on there, the LA 58th, done all that. Um, let those dry with the microset and the microsol, and as you can see, it's sucked it in really nice. The back there, the spine decals blended in really well. I'm really chuffed with that. Not bad at all. So once the microsol and the microset had dried, well, microset and microsol had dried, I then went in with my Humbrol matte coat, and it's been drying for 24 hours, and as you can see, it's dried an absolute treat. Blended in really well. And also, what I've done after the uh, matte coat had dried, I've put on my canopy, and it's in four pieces. Basically, what I did before I put the canopy on, um, I've gone and had with my masking with my electrical tape. As you can see there, all the outer parts have got to be painted to match the camo on the actual top of the uh, Phantom. So that's why I've put all the masking tape on, as you can see. And then with my glue and glaze, just uh, basically work my way back. So I put this section, this this part of the canopy on first, 
then the second area put that on and pushed it in then you got like that little spine section I suppose you could call it and then the back section it's glued in an absolute treat the back section has got a couple of little tabs that mount into the little holes at the back there so all I've got to do now is just uh, paint my camo when I haven't masked but it's not looking too bad at all right welcome back um, now I've done the uh, top and the side decaling and sealed and I've done the canopy it's time to turn the, uh, the phantom over and start on the ordinance but first you can see I finally painted my uh, exhausts now started off with the gun metal and I wanted a burn if burnt effect so thanks to the guys over at Monkey Chon Collective for recommending me these uh, Dowcraft paints you've got uh, metallic antique gold and a metallic bronze pick these up from the range for two pound a bottle so I dry, dry brush the bronze and the gold on along with uh, number 251 dark brown and number 26 brown and also my clear blue Tamiya and it's got a nice burnt effect not bad at all so these are now ready to be mounted into the uh, exhaust section there um, as you can see I've mounted four of the missiles to start off with you can see they've got like grooves that sit in so I've just glued those in with some glue and glaze so I didn't want the uh, paint to run so those are nice and stiff now I've just got to decal those you can see that I've white sprayed all of the uh, missiles um, on top of the primer you can also see the bomb, the bomb and the fuel tanks according to the plans you got a uh, dark green on the top and the grey on the bottom so I've done that I've also got the uh, mountain racks i painted those and the other two bombs that i've done so all i've got to do now is decal and mount these to the bottom stay with me right welcome back um i can say that the uh phantom is all finished i'm quite chuffed with the results not bad at all so here's the final reveal Alright, there it is. Um, I've done all the ordnance now, which I'll explain in a moment. You can see it's all ready and mounted. I've had to put it on my Humbrol pots because uh, I can't stand it on anything because I didn't put it on its landing gear. So I'll explain the canopy. And basically as you know I put the canopy on section by section and I put some blue tape on to mask it all off so I painted on took about two or three coats with a couple of touch ups here and there because some bits were still quite transparent with the light so once I've done all that you can see it's come out really nice now my only qualm with this you can see there's a slight gap and a slight gap there around the canopy it hasn't gone 100% down it's more prominent on this side as you can see and there a little bit there as well but I'm not bothered about that because once it goes on the ceiling you're not going to see that anyway so that's not too bad now some decals are still quite visible the borders are still quite visible with these warning ones on there but there's nothing I can do about those and at the LA one, the LA Squadron 58, you can see at a slight, at a certain angle, you can see that it's still quite visible. The outline. But if you look at it dead on, it disappears. So I'm not too bad with that. That's quite good, that is. I've also put the exhausts in. It tells you to put them at an angle, which I've done. On both sides, as you can see. And the exhausts are looking really, really nice. Not bad at all. I'm quite chuffed with the the recommendations of these paints. I'm well chuffed with that. To make them look used and uh, burnt and all that like. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this because I have to do this two-handed. Turning it over. 
Alright, turning it over and as you can see all my ordnance is on there now. Not looking too bad. Um, basically these bombs or fuel tanks or whatever they are. Um, underneath there's a couple of mounting holes. I had to widen those slightly. Because uh, it just wouldn't go in 100%. So once I've widened them and glued them in they look really really nice. And you've got this main bomb here. Again, um, I didn't have to widen the holes because I put the bracket in. That bracket went in perfect. And then the holes uh, that mount into the underneath the top of the bomb, they, were, they didn't need widening at all, so that glued down very, very easy. Again, with this bomb stroke fuel tank, whatever you want to call it, again, I had to widen the holes for that. Under the missile rack, I had to widen the hole for those as well. There was two holes, one there and one there. Um, basically, what I did is I um, assembled the rack. You got uh, three pieces. Uh, right. Wondering where it was on the plans. You've got the main mount, and you've got the two side mounts. You glue those into place. There's like a little notch. On the uh, there's two notches which you've got to line up to the pins. There's two pins, there's one there and one there. So you glue those in, and then you glue the missiles in. Now you've got two options for the missiles. You've got number 86 where you put the 87 wings on, or you've got the number 63. So what I've done is I used a combination of the both. I put one of the 63s on, on the outer part of the rack. And then I put, um, what was it, uh, number 86. I put an 86 on the inner part. So at least you get, I, I, I thought, you know, I didn't want to use one set of missiles, so I thought I'd make use of both sets of missiles, because you get four missiles each. So I'll just use one of each, well, two of each. Um, I put those on, I glued those on, um, like a couple of notches there and there, and then I just ran the glue down, let those set for 24 hours and they dried an absolute treat. Then what I did is I um, put the decals on, uh, you got one, two, three, four on each missile. So I did those, microset, microsole, let those dry. And then sealed them. I just put a drop of the uh, matte coat on each decal. On both sides as you can see. And on these as well. And that was pretty much it. Now with these uh, two bombs. You could use a variant. You could use uh, one of the channels at the front for those missiles but I, I put those missiles instead so what I did is I used that variant where it says you can mount it to the uh, bottom of the uh, missile rack and it tells you can option of one one on there but what I did is the channels that I mean in the side in the side of the bombs I just widened them slightly and then I just put one on there and one on there to make use of them and I just plop those on top of the glue, let those 24 hours to dry, and they've dried absolute solid. And as you can see, I've also decaled the missiles that I put in first. You've got the two decals there, the two decals there, and there's uh, two decals on that one, and two decals on that one. But I'm liking the ordnance, it's dried really, really well. I'm just hoping that once it's hung up, none of these want to fall off. Because they, they were sturdy when they're dry, but I don't know how it's going to be after a couple of months. They might start dropping off. Because on my tornado, I had to re I had to re put one of these on because it kept falling off. I don't know why. So I'm going to pause this again, just to turn it back over, and then just one last look at it. Me returning my turntable. And there you go. One good thing I'm quite chuffed with is with the tape. I didn't leave it on that long. Probably left it on for a couple of hours, and it hasn't scuffed or marked the um, the clear parts where I masked up. So they've actually really stayed really transparent and translucent. So there's no marks on there at all. Really well chuffed with that, and it brings out the pilot as well. I'm quite really well chuffed with that as well. 
So there it is, all finished. Um, hopefully I haven't bored you too much. If you've enjoyed watching these videos, I'll put some stills on at the end of this video. And uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>